In an earlier video, we introduced the Odin Project Validator, which allows the user to scan a scene or entire project for various errors and assets. This can be helpful if you're returning to a scene or assets that you created a long while ago, or if you have a larger development team and your programmers are not your level designers. In this video, we want to go into a bit more depth and look at how to create custom validation profiles using the built-in profile types. These profiles will allow you to customize exactly which assets and scenes are scanned. In a future video, we'll take a look at how to script your own fully custom profile type. In addition, in this video, we'll look at how to add profiles to the automation system so they can be used whenever play mode is entered, a new build of a project is made, or every time the project is opened. To get started, we need to open the project validator window. With this open, we can see the current profiles listed and clicking on any one of them can give you more information about each particular profile. But for this video, we want to take a look at how to create your own custom profile. And to do that, click the button at the top of the window labeled Manage Profiles. This will open an additional window. In this new window, there are two buttons on top. The button on the right will reset the built-in profiles back to their default state, and the button on the left will bring up options to create a new validator profile. There are three options for validation profiles, asset, scene, and a collection. Let's create one of each and take a look at the options of each type of profile. A profile can be edited by selecting it in the project folders and the options will appear in the inspector. Or you can also view and edit the options directly in the project validator window by clicking the button with the name of the profile and then selecting the profile in the next window. Regardless of profile type, at the top, you'll find a field to name the profile as well as a large text area to add a description for the profiler. Then specific to the asset profile, there are a handful of options to control which assets are going to be checked. The first option is to filter by type. For example, prefabs, scriptable objects, or materials can be used to filter what is being scanned. You can designate the paths or folders to be searched, making the search as specific or as general as you need. If you want to make sure particular assets get scanned, but don't want to worry about where exactly they are in your project, you can drag and drop those assets into the asset reference slot. Likewise, you can also exclude particular paths or folders as well as particular assets. Moving on to the scene profile, we can see options to include scenes that are in the build or to include any open scenes. We can also choose to include any asset dependencies which may not be in the scene, but objects in the scene do depend on. Then, just like the asset profile, there is the ability to include or exclude specific paths which may contain scenes. This could be used to ensure that a test scene is excluded from the scan, or levels that are getting built but not ready to be included in a final build are going to be scanned. The last type of profile is the collection, and it's pretty much what it sounds like. It allows you to put together a collection of other profiles to build a larger profile. You can include asset profiles, scene profiles, and even other collection profiles. The composition of profiles like this allows flexibility and precision in making custom validation profiles. Custom profiles are useful, but being able to automate them makes them even more useful, and it's easy to do with the project validator. Using the breadcrumbs at the top of the window, we can go back to the overview and click on the button that says Automate Validation. Here, we can see the three hooks or events that profiles can be attached to and run automatically. Profiles can run each time the editor enters play mode, when a build is made, or when a project is first opened. Each hook can easily be toggled on and off, like so. Each hook has the same few options. There's a toggle to complete the validation if there's an error, a dropdown to choose exactly what happens when an error is found, and most importantly, the profiles that run on each event. The default profiles can be swapped or additional profiles can be easily added. We can see the automation in action by toggling the on play event and entering play mode. The project validator automatically scanned the open scene and found errors. This prevented the editor from going into play mode and the project validator window shows us the detected errors, which allows us to easily address those errors. 
So there you go. Custom profiles are easy to create and easy to use with the automation system. The Project Validator as a whole can save countless hours of work searching for and fixing errors in a project. The larger your team or the longer your project takes to complete, the more time the Project Validator can save you. If you have questions about the Project Validator, we'd encourage you to drop by the DevDog Discord or the Odin Inspector website. And until next time, happy game designing.